Hello students, I am Muhammad Kamran Halil from the YouTube channel The Physics Gurus. So today we will continue from the O levels topic, the DC circuits. The DC circuit that have the two types. Number one of them is a series combination and number two is a parallel combination. A series combination is a combination in which the components are attached one after another. And uh, another thing related with the series circuit that if you will uh, switch off uh, any one of the component will uh, get out of uh, working or uh, it will not, it will stop working then it means that the whole circuit will shut down. For example, the main switch of your home that is placed in a series circuit. When you will switch off the main switch, then the light of the whole home will shut down. So the series combination is a combination in which the components are attached one after the other and it will make the single loop for the flow of the current. Like this one, the cell is 30 volt, then there is first resistance is 5 ohm, second resistance is 10 ohm and the third resistance is 15 ohm. So these components are attached one after another. So they will make a series combination. The current is represented or measured by the ammeter that is placed in a series. And uh, then V1 will represent the voltage across R1, V2 is across V2 and uh, V3 is across R3. And they are connected in parallel. Ammeter connected in series and voltmeter will be connected in parallel. The properties of a series combination. In series combination, the current will always remain same. And what is the reason that has been asked in the paper? Because there is only one path for the flow of the current. The voltage will divide. The voltage will divide according to the value of the resistance. The voltage and resistance are directly proportional to each other. It means that if the resistance have higher value, the potential difference across that particular resistance will be more. The question which will be asked related with this are very easy question. Number one, that they will ask what is the total resistance, what is the net resistance or what is the effective resistance. So remember one thing that if you want to calculate the total resistance in series combination, then what you will do, you will add all these three resistances. 5 plus 10 plus 15 is equal to 30 ohms. So this is the total resistance, this is the net resistance, this is the effective resistance. So to calculate the total resistance, just add up all those resistors because they are connected one after another. Then how can we find the current? We will apply the formula I equal to V over RE. So remember one thing that if you want to find the current in a series combination or current from the battery, current from the power supply, current from the source, then you are required to calculate the total resistance in first step. Then you will move towards the second step. So the answer for this I equal to V over RE V is 30, R is 30, so you will get answer 1 ampere. Then the second thing is, which is required to calculate is the value calculation for the V1, then V2 and V3. So V1 is equal to I into R1 from the Ohm's law, V2 I into R2 and V3 equal to I into R3. So V1 equal to 5 volt, V2 equal to 10 volt and V3 equal to 15 volt. If you want to verify whether your question is correct or not correct, what you have to do, just add 5, 10 and 15 volt. So it will give you 30 volt. So that is the 30 volt, which is the source voltage. So it means that if you will get approximate 30, sometimes the question you will get in the decimal values. So if you will get approximate the value nearest to the 30, it means your answer is correct. Now in question number two, the scenario is entirely different. So what you will do? you will have to find the value of the R2, which is this one. So the ammeter reading is given 0.5 ampere, R1 is 5 ohm and R2 is required. So in order to calculate the R2, the formula which we have to use is the Ohm's law. So R is equal to V over I. So we will use the formula R equal to V over I. The current is given, no doubt that is 0.5 ampere, it will remain same throughout the circuit, throughout the combination. But we don't have the value of the V2, which is across the R2 component. So first we will find the value of the V2. What we will do? First we will find the value of V1 by using V1 equal to I into R1. The I is given 0.5, 0.5 
R is given 5 ohm so we will calculate the wave one that is equal to 2.5 volt now as we know that according to this point the voltage divide so across R1 5 ohm the voltage drop will be 2.5 volt and then we will subtract it from the source voltage from the total voltage from the power supply voltage so then we will get the answer 7.5 volt this is the voltage which is across which will drop across the resistance R2 now your work is very easy now what you have to do now you are required to calculate the value of the R2 R2 that is equal to V2 over I the value of current is same the V2 already we have calculated in the previous part it is 17.5 so the unknown resistance is 35 ohm there are some advantages and there are some disadvantages of this the disadvantage is that overall resistance will increase so it means that the current will decrease in series combination this is the basic disadvantage of this series combination number two uh, if the circuit will break at any point then the whole circuit will break down it will not work because there is only one path for the flow of the current the advantage is we can get the output according to the R requirement for example we are having the cell of 30 volt but we want the output voltage let's suppose 7.5 volt so we will place the resistance according to that calculation and then we will get the output as a 7.5 volt from the input source of 30 volt so it is a voltage divider or it is a potential divider as well and the same current to all the components so in series combination the current will remain same I hope you have good understanding of now series combination now we will move towards the parallel combination